This is Dr. K. V. Swati, lecturer, Department of Oral Medicine and Radiology, SRM Dental College, Ramapuram. The e content for this session will be on orthopantomography. The extraoral source of radiation was first discovered in 1946 by Dr. Patiru. He was regarded as the father of panoramic radiography and he experimented slit beam method of panoramic radiography for dental arches. The x ray source was stationary. And initially, this technique was called as parabolography. In 1949, it was renamed as pantomography by Patero by using this technique by placing the film extraorally. A film cassette and the patient revolved with the same velocity on a single vertical axis. However, the X ray source still remained stationary. In 1958, Dr. Eiko Sajiro of Japan suggested the name orthopantomography to Dr. Patero. The patient either sits or stands immobile while the X-ray tube rotates behind the neck and a curved film cast moves around the face, rotating on its own axis. It revolves on three successive rotational axes, one concentric rotational axis for anterior portion of the jaw and two eccentric axes for each side of the jaws. It was in the period of 1985 to 1991, the digital panoramic imaging came into place. The first attempt to build a dental digital panoramic was by Mac David et al. The idea was based on a linear pixel array of single pixel column sensor, which was not appropriate for such an application because there was no tomographic effect. There were some difficulties to collimate the X-ray beam and to control the X-ray dose delivered to the patient. And there was also poor generator efficiency. So what are the indications for extra oral imaging? Extraoral imaging is mainly indicated for detection of fractures of the maxillofacial skeleton, for identification of fractures of the skull, for identification of pathologies involving the sinuses or air spaces. As we all know, there are four pairs of paranasal sinuses, namely the frontal, ethmoid, maxillary sinus, and the sphenoid sinus. For diagnosing temporomandibular joint disorders, and also it is used in patients who are not able to tolerate the placement of intraoral films who have trismus or limited mouth opening. Some of the important anatomical radiographic baselines. Frankfurt's horizontal plane. This is a line which runs from the inferior portion of the infraorbital margin to the highest point of the superior surface of the external auditory meatus. Mid-sagittal plane follows the sagittal sutures which exactly runs in the midline dividing the skull into right and left. Canthomyatal line is the radiological baseline which runs from the outer canthus of one eye basically to the tragus of the ear. Infraorbital line runs across the face from one infraorbital margin that is from the right to the left to the other. So what are the indications for OPG? For an overall assessment of the dentition of the jaws, for evaluation of impacted, uninterrupted or supernumerary teeth, for evaluation of fractures of the jaw, for the assessment of growth and development of the jaws, for initial assessment of cysts and tumors of the jaws, which is not easily seen in intraoral films. For periodontal assessment to evaluate the bone loss. Initial orthodontic evaluation, which is supplemented with a cephalogram. For assessment of developmental disturbances affecting the teeth and the jaws. And for assessment of temporomandibular joint and maxillary sinus when it comes to TMG, mainly the hard or the osseous structures, the condyle, the articular eminence is best visualized. So this is an orthopantomogram. As you can see, the both the maxilla and mandible is visualized in a single radiographic film. So what is the working principle of an OPG? So during the exposure of an OPG, the X-ray tube and the cassette will rotate simultaneously around the patient in opposite directions and produces a section or an image layer, which is known as a focal trough layer that conforms to the shape of the dental arches. So there is an axis of rotation or the pivotal point around which the X-ray tube and the cassette will rotate. So this point is known as the center of rotation. It is illustrated in the images below. So what is this focal trough layer or image layer? So both the X-ray source and the receptor moves in opposite direction. It will create a gen zone of sharpness. So that layer of sharpness is known as focal trough. So the closer the anatomical structure is positioned to the center of the trough, the more clear the resultant image. So as the anatomical structure moves away from this focal trough, it starts to get blurred. So these are some of the anatomical landmarks that are seen in OPG. A schematic line diagram is shown. Almost 21 landmarks can be visualized using an OPG. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of OPG? 
Advantages include broad coverage of the facial bones and teeth, low radiation dose, technical easy. It is used in patients with trismus or limited mouth opening. It is quick and convenient and used for patient education and case presentations because it provides a general assessment of the dentition. Some of the disadvantages would be a low resolution image. Finer details that are seen in intraoral images such as an IOPA is not much seen in an OPG. Magnification across the image is also unequal. So linear measurements that is done using an OPG, the mesiodistal measurements are not that much reliable. Image is of superimposition of real, double and ghost images. So requires casual visualization because there's a lot of superimposition of the anatomical structures. It requires proper patient positioning to avoid errors in any artifacts. In case of severe maxillar mandibular discrepancy, it is difficult to image both the jaws. So these are the parts of an OPG mission. You have the bite block, the diaphragm, the handles, a cassette carriage, the cassette, a narrow vertical slot in the cassette holder and a head holding apparatus to make the patient stationary. So this is the correct positioning of a patient in an OPG. So as you can see, the tongue is pressed against the palate and the teeth is in the groove of the bite block. And there are some laser markings to show the Frankfurt's horizontal plane being parallel to the flow, the mid-sagittal plane being in the center of the nose and the lips, the lips maintaining a lip seal, and you have the canine eminence. So the mid-sagittal plane will be perpendicular to the flow, whereas the Frankfurt's horizontal plane will be parallel to the flow. So again, the indications when the patient is standing or sitting, so how do you position the patient correctly? So they have to stand erect without the spine being slumped. They have to be in an upright position. The mouth position, you have to bite on the bite block to achieve proper alignment of the teeth. The mesogital plane has to be in the center, should be perpendicular to the flow. Frankfurt's horizontal plane should be parallel to the flow. The tongue has to be placed against the heart palate. The lips has to be closed. The eye also can be closed so that the patient does not move during the moment of the tube head. So again, the correct position here is A. Whereas in the second image, you can see it is more elongated. The third image, it shows foreshortening of the structure. So what are some of the errors that can occur because of improper patient positioning? So you have ghost images. So basically, the initial patient preparation would be all the metallic ornaments of the patient should be removed to prevent any metallic artifact. There can also be artifacts that can occur because of lead apron, which produces a radiopaque cone-shaped artifact in the center of the image. If the patient's lips are not closed, it can cause a dark radiolucent shadow around the anterior teeth. If the patient's chin is too high, the condyles may not be visible and the maxillary incisors can be blurred and there can also be reversal of the smile line. If the chin position is too low, there can be an exaggerated smile line and the condyles are higher on the image. The mandibular incisors appear blurred and the roots appear short. If the patient is too forward, the anterior teeth are narrowed and the spine is visible on the film. If it's too backward, it is, appears more magnified, the anterior teeth. If the head is not placed in the center, the ramus and the posterior teeth will have an unequal magnification. If the spine is not straight, it appears as a radio obesity in the center of the image. So the correct positions are also indicated in the table. So these are some of the images to show how the patient positioning is improper. As you can see in the first image, the chin is too uh, low or the patient has bent two down. The second image, the chin has been lifted away from the bite block. So these are the OPGs showing ghost images that can occur because of wearing metallic ornaments. So it causes a ghost image of both the right side and the left side. So this can cause an obstruction in the diagnostic accuracy. So some of the case scenarios. So OPGs are used for assessing impacted teeth. As you can see, all the eights, one eight, two eight, three eight, four eight appear impacted. So impactions, again, can be assessed whether they are horizontal, whether it is making a perpendicular to the long axis of the adjacent teeth, or it is parallel to the long axis of the adjacent teeth, which is called as vertical impaction, or it is more inclined mesially or distally. It is also used in periodontal assessment to evaluate bone loss. So bone loss, as you can see in this OPG, there's an extensive bone loss of both the maxilla and the mandible, along with periodontal abscess in multiple teeth. So bone loss, again, can be assessed whether it's a horizontal bone loss, whether the plane is parallel or it is angulated or oblique. We call it as a vertical or angular bone loss. And the measurements of the bone loss can also be done to evaluate whether the bone loss is affecting the crestal, middle, or the apical one-third of the alveolar bone. It is also used in assessment of cystic lesions. As you can see here, there is a case of dentigerous cyst involving 
along with the resorption of the distal root of 37. OPGs are also used for visualizing certain other cystic uh, lesions, such as a, this is a case of a radicular cyst. There is a root canal treated 36, so it is always associated with the non vital teeth. OPGs are also used in oral surgery for assessment of fractures. Fractures of the mandible are best visualized. Again, there's a fracture of the symphysial and the parasymphysial region. It can also be used in case of assessment of tumors. Here, there's a case of amyloblastoma of the right side of the mandible, an extensive lesion showing a soap bubble or a honeycomb appearance, along with the resorption of the roots. It is also used for assessment of teeth for orthodontic movement, for orthodontic management, supplemented with a lateral cephalogram. In cases of prosthodontics, for evaluating for full mouth rehabilitation, for assessment of dentition in case of pediatrics to show the eruption stage, it can be used for age estimation of the teeth. Here, there's a case of mixed dentition of both the primary and the permanent teeth are seen. Thank you.